in brightest day and darkest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those that worship evil's might beware Green Lantern's light. <laughs>going on everybody, Brymesis, the wisest and most powerful of all nerds here. Pokemon is one of my all time favorite video game franchises. It's the second best selling video game franchise on the planet. It's a unique RPG experience unlike anything else. I didn't get girls in middle school or high school and instead of chasing girls, I was always chasing Pokemon. And if I could do it all again, I wish I spent more time getting better at competitive Pokemon when I was younger. I would have been really great at it. At this current place in time, there are over 800 Pokemon to discover and collect. It's really hard for me to delineate a top 10 list of my favorite Pokemon when there's always new generation and new Pokemon coming about. Plus, due to the competitive aspect of Pokemon, I've acquired an appreciation for certain Pokemon that I would not normally care about. So I'm going to attempt to do a top 10 list on each Pokemon generation while I can during this month. For this list, I'll be including both design, lore, competitive usage, and anything else that will make somebody think a Pokemon is awesome. None of these videos will include legendary Pokemon. Anyway, let's get started. Kabutops is one of the coolest looking Pokemon in my opinion. It could replace monsters from the Alien series, because in reality it looks more like an alien than a Pokemon. It's a rock and water type Pokemon, and it is one of the three original fossil Pokemon. It boasts pretty high attack and defense. Plus, it has the hidden ability called Weak Armor which allows it to boost its speed by sacrificing its defense whenever it gets hit. It can learn Home Claws to increase its accuracy and stats simultaneously. It can also learn Water Jet which is a water type priority move. Home Claws really helps land that nemesis attack called Stone Edge which is one of the strongest right talk moves but the problem with that is that it has an 80% accuracy. Nine Tails. Nine Tails is a Pokemon that comes in two different forms due to the seventh generation Aloha form. Nine Tails is originally a fire type and also has the hidden ability called Drought. It changes the weather condition to sunny day and boosts fire type attacks significantly. It can also charge moves like Solar Beam in one move. And it also gives Pokemon that have the ability Chlorophyll, which usually atone to grass Pokemon, to move twice as fast. Its lower form is an ice and fairy type Pokemon, which basically means that it's a dragon type Pokemon's worst nightmare. The lower form is a little better because it's a little faster. It also comes with a hidden ability called Snow Warding, which summons a hailstorm. But the hailstorm does damage to Pokemon each turn, unlike strong sunlight or rain. Plus, it can also learn to move Aurora Veil, which is a move that could only be used during hail. And it causes all attacks, physical or special, done to your Pokemon to be cut in half. Not to mention, it can learn to move Freeze Drive, which is the only Ice-type move that is super effective against Water-type Pokemon. Snorlax is a Pokemon that just got better with age. Well, to be honest, he's been extremely great since the beginning of competitive Pokemon. Even since the first generation. Especially since the first two generations of Pokemon primarily focused on defensive play. Snorlax is a tank that only has a weakness to fighting type Pokemon. But over the years, it's acquired Pokemon abilities that include immunity and thick fat. Immunity prevents its Pokemon from being poisoned, while thick fat reduces the, the attack damage from fire and ice type moves. It can also learn Belly Drum, and now in the seventh generation with berries that can negate HP loss and also Normalism Z. It can max out its attack stats and deal damage with the best of them. Cloyster Throughout the generations, Ice-type Pokemon weren't that useful aside from slaying dragons. And even in the 6th generation of Pokemon, they got knocked down a notch because of Fairy-types being able to do the job just as well, without having the same weaknesses. However, Cloyster has been one of the most commonly used Ice-type Pokemon since the very first generation and has been getting buffed over time. One of Cloyster's abilities is Skill Link, which allows it to always land 5 times with moves like Rock Blast, Icicle Spear, or Pin Missile. It also has phenomenal defensive stats, except for its special defense. 
And in Generation 5, it learned Shell Smash, which would sacrifice its defensive stats to heighten its attack and special attack as well as its speed by two stages, allowing this Pokemon to perform just as well as Legendary Pokemon, or better. Alakazam Also known as the weak and fragile Mewtwo, Alakazam is the definition of a glass cannon. It has incredibly high speed and special attack, but very low defense stat. One of its abilities is called Magic Guard. It can use the Pokemon item Life Orb to the greatest effect. Life Orb is a Pokemon item that boosts your Pokemon's attacks by 30% by bringing their health turn by turn. But because of Magic Guard, Life Orb does no damage to Alakazam. Neither do Hailstorm, Sad Storms, or even the move Toxic or Burn. Without the use of a priority move, Alakazam can be extremely hard to hit because he's extremely fast and can body a lot of Pokemon in one hit. He's probably the sole purpose the move Sucker Punch came about in the 4th generation, and Dark Pokemon came about in the 2nd generation. Plus, Alakazam has a Mega Evolution if it wasn't badass enough. The first generation of Pokemon literally had the trashiest bug type Pokemon. So there was almost nothing that could stand up to Alakazam, but thankfully they gave us Gengar, a Pokemon that's very comparable in staff to Alakazam, just higher defenses and less speed. Ghost type moves are super effective against Psychic types. The problem with this is that Gengar was also a Poison type Pokemon, so it was equally in danger to Alakazam, if not more because Alakazam was the faster Pokemon, and both are pretty frail. But aside from that, Gengar has a larger move pool and perhaps the most unpredictable move set in all of competitive Pokemon. Furthermore, Gengar is really awesome. He's creepy and cool looking at the same time, plus he has a ridiculous Mega Evolution that you don't want to be on the opposite side of because of its ability Shadow Tag which prevents your Pokemon from escaping. Gengar is also paired with Pokemon and Pokemon Tournament. Machamp is the premier fighting type Pokemon of the first generation. It's just a freaking boss all around. It has huge muscles and a world championship belt to contain its power. And it has four arms. It has very high attack, but very low speed and special defense. However, it can learn Bullet Punch, which is a steel type move, and a priority one at that that helps against fairy types. It also has the ability called No Guard, which gives all moves 100% accuracy. And even learn the terribly strong move called Dynamic Punch, which automatically confuses the opposing Pokemon if it survives. And also, Dynamic Punch is one of the strongest fighting type moves there is. Since Machamp is a fighting type Pokemon, it does extra damage. We all know how frustrating it is to fight with confused Pokemon. Machamp is also a playable Pokemon in Pokemon Tournament. Gyarados. Gyarados is freaking amazing. Its pre-evolution Magikarp Pokemon is literally the weakest Pokemon in all Pokemon. Once Magikarp evolves at level 20, man oh man, it's a problem. Gyarados has really great stats all around and an extremely large move pool. Plus, it has the abilities Intimidate and Moxie. Intimidate cuts your opponent's attack in half on the turn that Gyarados is summoned, and Moxie increases Gyarados' attack by one stage every time it gets knocked out on your opponent's Pokemon, making it an increasing problem the longer it's around. Plus, Gyarados has a Mega Evolution that's freaking crazy. Dragonite The first official premier dragon type of Pokemon in the first generation. Although Charizard and Gyarados technically classified as dragon Pokemon, like the majority of dragon type Pokemon, at least one Pokemon from each generation, Dragonite is a pseudo legendary Pokemon. Even though it's not a legendary Pokemon, it has stats that rival that of legendary Pokemon. And usually all Dragon type Pokemon have extremely large move pools, which allow them to deal with virtually any kind of threat. Dragonite himself has the hidden ability called Multi Skill. With Multi Skill, as long as Dragonite is at full health, all attacks do 50% less damage. Dragonite can also learn Dragon Dance to boost its attack and speed simultaneously, and can also use Roost to recover 50% of its health. Oh, and it, also the priority move called Extreme Speed, which is one of the most powerful priority moves in the series. Charizard, one of the most famous and popular Pokemon from any generation. If this Pokemon is not in your top 10 list overall, then you have issues. Charizard doesn't really even need an explanation on why he's on this list. I can just put the name up here and be like, yeah. Charizard has been a playable character in two other fighting games such as Poké Tournament and Super Smash Bros. On a competitive side, Charizard would normally struggle because of the new Stealth Rock. 
which came about in the fourth generation of Pokemon. He is a fire type Pokemon and a flying type Pokemon, not to be confused with a dragon type. Strange. I was sure the Dragon Rush would have done more. After all, Charizard is a dragon type Pokemon. Uh huh? Bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say something funny? The thing is, Charizard isn't a dragon type. But I said Charizard used dragon tail and fly around and everything! It sure looks like a dragon type to me! Look! Because Charizard has a double weakness to rock type moves, Stealth Rock would take away half of Charizard's HP as soon as it came into play. This made Charizard a hard Pokemon to use despite its decent stats and extremely large move pool. But by the sixth generation where they gave us Mega Evolutions, Charizard had a lot more to work with. And not only that, Charizard is one of two Pokemon to have two different Mega Evolutions. So for being the epitome of cool, Charizard gets number one on the list. He is the Pokemon that all the Pokemon aspire to be in some way. That wraps up my top 10 list of the first generation of Pokemon. Please stay tuned because I'll be running through all seven generations of Pokemon before the release of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe because I'll be doing some pretty cool stuff in the future and you definitely don't want to miss that content. Anyway, it's your boy, Brimesis, the wisest and powerful of all nerds. I will see you guys next time with the top 10 second generation Pokemon.